this one was on the 2010 exam. So uh, when you take the test in May, there will be three FRQs um, and you have to write all three of them. Each one should take you like 25 minutes. So this one was on the test in 2010. Uh, it's useful to use practice questions that have been on the test before because they show you exactly like what you're gonna see. So in this case, it's giving you two, right? It's got country A, country B. It says the population pyramids above represent two countries at different stages of the demographic transition and economic development. Um, you know what, I let's skip the let's skip A because we didn't talk about the DTM today. Um, the, the demographic transition model we will talk about, unless you, you guys have already studied it. Have you already studied the DTM? Um, and if so, I mean, we can just go through it. So this one says explain, no, okay. So uh, let's just look at B and C. This one says uh, discuss one positive impact of each country's population structure on its economic development. So for country A, what is one positive impact of this population structure? Something that's good about this population. Uh, this one, it tends to be like, you know, you can see this is more of the like triangle. So this is a developing nation. So this is for this one, you have to think of like a positive impact. So um, I would say, you know, let's see. I mean, let, let's see what you guys have to say. So what are, what would be some positive impacts of uh, the population structure there? I'm just gonna look up. Give you guys a second to take a look at that. Okay. Okay, so one person said, uh, many workers available and they are young. Uh, yeah, so the fact that there's like a lot of young people, right? So like obviously this country has a high birth rate, but the good thing about that is that you have a lot of young people, right? And young people can be innovative, they can be creative, and they can they can be good workers because they're young, they're healthy. So that's a good thing, right? Having young people. And then the adverse of that would be that you have you don't have a lot of old people, right? And that means that you don't have to have you know, you don't have the same problems that like Japan does. Japan has a lot of, their elder, elderly population is massive. So they have to figure out how to support them. In this country, they don't, right? So they have, they're going to have more people. Um, yeah, so it's definitely developing. Uh, let's see, they, young workforce, they have a large and young, yep. So the only can help older generations out. Yeah, so the only, the only thing is that the, the infant mortality rate is super high in this country. So they would definitely have to find ways to curb that. Um, one positive impact of this other one of country B. So uh, what's something good about country B, uh, the way that it is structured and you have to focus specifically on economic development. So with FRQs, it's really important that you pay close attention to the, the words in the question. So in terms of economic development, uh, what's something positive about this population structure? Something positive. All right, male and female is fairly even. Yeah. Uh, so you just I would have to make sure that you attach that to something economic. Uh, more adults to help take care of older and younger people. Yeah, right. The dependency ratio in this country is good. There's a lot of workers here, right? A lot of people. Yeah, exactly. Their workforce can support both the younger generations and the older ones. Exactly, right? There's a lot of people in that working age that will be able to support the older and younger generations. All right, let's get into negative impact. So for country A, what would be a negative impact of um, their population structure. So what is the negative of having that triangle that like, you know, a negative impact and make sure that you attach it to 
economic development. Yeah. So definitely low life expectancy, right? And when people don't live as long, they are not economically active for as long, right? So like the longer people are living, the more work that they have, you know, put into the society and that's good for the economy. Um, fewer old people equals less experienced slash skilled workers or managers. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a good point, right? So like there's not as many like older, a lot, not as much experience. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, lack of experience in running a nation, maybe not much savings. Yeah. Um, another thing you could talk about too is that is the infant mortality rate. Um, the fact that there's a strain on resources for the younger generation. Um, all right. And then lastly, for country B, what would be a negative for them? Country B. Yeah, fewer children. Um, you could say too that like, right, so fewer children means that in the future there might be labor shortages, right? So as these as these kids grow up, you know, there's less of them than there are current, you know, members of that society, of that like age group. And so they might have a problem later on when it comes to uh, filling jobs. There might not be enough people. Tough to fill the basic entry level jobs, yeah. So, all right, so in terms of like FRQs, just to give you like a quick rundown. So this is, this is a good example. This is an example, like, I, like we talked about, like this was on the test and the way that you answer these is very, it's honestly really straightforward. It's not meant to be an essay. It's not meant to be like a really long drawn out answer. Like you really just have to kind of like cut to the chase and answer it. And we're gonna do a lot of, um, practice FRQs as we go. Uh, sometimes I'll pull up like a document and just kind of share that uh, with, with you guys so you can watch, you can kind of write one together. And that's something we'll be able to practice. Um, one of the things, you know, like the way that these things are graded, uh, the like rubrics kind of change depending on questions, but it's pretty much worth the number of points for how many things it's asking you to do. So in this one, uh, A is asking you to do one thing, explain the demographic characteristics of each country. Oh, no. it's asking you to do two things, right? So you gotta explain for both thing, right? So part A is asking you to explain the demographic characteristics for country A and country B. So that's two things. Part B is asking you to do two things, right? Discuss one positive for A, one positive for B, and then in C, same thing. So this whole FRQ, on the 2010 exam was worth six points. And it's pretty much like you either get the point or you don't, right? You're, you never lose points on FRQs. Like they're not gonna take anything away from you. So it's worth it to take a guess, to always try on these because you got nothing to lose, right? So it's not like you write something down and then they're gonna take points from you. It's just, they're just awarding points for things that you do correctly. And so the way that you would answer this is, is very like, very straight to the point. So I would say to write, you know, you end up writing like two to three sentences per like point that you're earning. Um, and sometimes it's even like one sentence. Uh, it's really just like answer it. And so, you know, you could answer like we just did part B and C. You could answer part B in like, I mean, I would say to write two sentences for this graph and two sentences for this graph. Right, you know, one positive impact of country A is, um, what do we say? The uh, like more children will be a, a higher, a bigger workforce, and then you can kind of like give one more sentence to just sort of explain that. And then one positive thing for country B is blank, you know, and then explain it. So you could do part B in four sentences, part C in four sentences. So it's pretty straight, straightforward. So we're gonna do a bunch of examples of that. Um, do you guys have any other questions? Uh, and even if you are, you know, if, if like you're on a different unit right now or you have a test coming up or you have homework right now and you're not sure what to do with it, you can ask me anything about 
Human Geo, and I'm happy to help out. Um, we definitely have some time left over, and so we can talk through any of those things. Um, the other thing that I will mention really quick is the button there, the replays and future live sessions. Um, Fiveable is expanding this year. Last year, I think we, last year we helped student, there was like 500 students that studied with us. Uh, and I think we ended up like, I did some math. We literally saved them over like a million dollars in college credits. And if that sounds ridiculous, it's because the cost of college is insane. And so um, throughout the year, we're going to be doing live sessions every week, just like this. Um, you know, sometimes explaining content, sometimes doing practice questions, practice multiple choice, answering all of your questions. And throughout the entire year, uh, we can really make sure that you're not only doing really well in class, but also prepared for the exam in May. And in May, in May, we're actually going to do like a lot more sessions. So like the week of the test, we do sessions every night and those are like packed, right? Everyone's freaking out. So if you think about your future self and how much you might be freaking out then, um, one of the things that you can do is join Fiveable. Uh, in the month of September, our live reviews were all free. Um, going forward, it's $15 for the whole year. And that's our fall like early bird price because you guys are super on top of it and you're here and it's September. So the price is actually going to increase throughout the year because more kids will need us to be teaching live sessions. So you can get in and lock down your whole year with AP Human Geography with Fiveable for $15. So way cheaper than any other live reviews. Like that's, that's, I, if you look up Human Geography tutors, it's like no joke, hundreds of dollars. So, all right, let's see, question. Is it okay to use a current event when answering this question? So, um, you just need to, in terms of like answering the question, you need to make sure that you are being really specific to what the question's asking. So this question here, this FRQ is, uh, it, it's not telling you what countries this is, right? This just says country A, country B. And you can imagine that country A is similar to like Namibia, like we talked about, and that country B is similar to, you know, like the United States, something like that. Um, but they're not giving you actual countries. So you don't have to use current events to answer this. And I'm not sure that you would be able to because you don't have countries to actually attach to. You could use it in your explanation if you wanted to, right? One positive impact of country A is blank. An example of this would be in Namibia because blank. So you could totally do that. But in terms of this question, current events wouldn't really help you out. For other questions, uh, yeah, you can. I mean, you can talk about any of those things. And a lot of times um, getting the points for things uh, will require that you sort of know something about current events, something about history. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, do they use any other type of graphs or data instead of population data? So on the exam, you're going to see all types of, there, there's a lot of models in, in human geography. Um, population pyramids is one of them. And so there's a lot of other ways that they're going to show you data. Um, maps is a really popular one. So the, you know, chances of you seeing a map in your FRQs is, is high. Um, you could see some other data organized in some other way. Um, I think, you know, you could see even just like population data on like a graph could happen or on a in a chart could happen. So you can see any type of like stimulus like that, not just pyramids. Um, all right. Oh, pyramids, what I meant. I'm doing CBR, CDR and NIR. And I see questions like if this number is low or high, what does this show you about this country? Yeah, so, okay, so if, we, if you haven't studied the, the, the demographic transition model yet, CBR is crude birth rate, CDR is crude death rate, and NIR is the natural increase rate. And so just like with pyramids, you can like extrapolate, you can analyze like why these things would exist. So typically for, for both of these, for birth rates and death rates, um, really think about things like 
medicine and education, um, technology, right? Those like three things can explain like why. Why is there a, a high birth rate? Um, that would be because, you know, you can attribute that to lack of education um, because women are more likely to, or I don't know, more likely to have more children, the less education they have. That's a pattern um, in terms of death rates, right? So like people will live longer in a society with medicine and technology in a society without that or with a lack of it, then they are more likely to die, right? Like that, the, if you get, it's, there's so many different diseases that if you get that disease and you live in an industrialized country, a developed country, then you'd be okay. If you get that disease and you live in a developing nation, then you, you would be in trouble. Um, and so in terms of CBR, CDR, and the natural increase rate, Think of medicine, technology, and education.